When I first started programming in Unity around 10 years ago, I was making very little progress and my workflow was slow and clunky. Most of it was due to not knowing the Unity engine, but a lot was also due to not being proficient in Visual Studio. Over time, I've learned a lot of tips and tricks that improved my workflow, so I would like to share them with you so you won't have to waste time figuring them out yourself like I did. Let's start with the tips that will speed up the writing of new code. So here's the first tip. Use IntelliSense auto-completion to speed things up. All you need to do is hit the tab key when you see a suggestion pop up. For example, if I want to start a for loop, I would just write for and add an open bracket. At that point, IntelliSense jumps in with a suggestion to complete the loop. All that I need to do here is press the tab key and it will fill it in for me. And if it prompts me again, I can just press tab to accept it or hit escape if I don't need it. Of course, it goes without saying that this works for other use cases, not only for the loops. Another cool tip for speeding things up is to use the quick fix option for those pesky errors you might miss as you code. For example, I'm calling the move towards method, but I accidentally forgot to declare max delta as a variable. Now, it's underlined in red, which means that Visual Studio has spotted the issue. If I just click on it and press Ctrl dot, the Visual Studio will prompt me with possible solutions for this issue. I can navigate them using the arrow keys and select the one appropriate for my case. In this case, the generate variable max delta option will solve my error. Just remember that not every suggestion is correct for your issue, so choose carefully. This third tip is all about efficiency. When declaring new variables for a new script, we're often having to declare multiple variables of the same type. Instead of writing them all out manually, we can press the Ctrl D keys to duplicate the current line and then only replace the name of the variable. You can actually use this key combination to duplicate anything that's under selection. For example, this whole method. But I personally mostly use this for declaring new variables when creating new scripts. The fourth tip I wish I had learned much sooner is to use the ALT and up and down error to move the current line up or down in the script. For example, I defined two variables, one for the maximum allowed value and one for the minimum. However, it's more intuitive to first have the minimum value displayed and then the maximum one. So I can place my cursor on the line I want to move and use the ALT and UP arrow to move it up. It's that easy. This can also be used for anything that is currently selected. For example, you can select multiple lines and then move them up or down with the same key combination. And by the way, I didn't know you can select lines by their numbers for a very long time as well. So this is an extra tip, I guess. The final tip of this section is related to quickly navigating through the code base. For example, in this class, I was writing code that uses lightning points to create a shape of the lightning, but I forgot the inner details of this lightning point class. Instead of opening the search explorer and trying to manually find it there, what you can do is click on the lightning point and press the F12 key on the keyboard. This will automatically open the lightning point class in a separate tab. You can also use this to navigate the definition of private variables inside the class, or to check the definition of different functions. This next section of tips is related to refactoring and cleanup of the code. You can argue that they're even more important since in larger projects you spend most of the time maintaining the code base. This sixth tip is for quickly renaming different properties, methods, or even classes. Before I knew this tip, I used to manually rename a variable and then go over the whole script and manually replace all usages of this variable with a new name. Of course, there's an easier way to do this. Select the variable and press and hold the control key. While holding it, press the R key twice. This will open a renaming window that will enable you to rename this variable. Additionally, it shows the number of references that will be renamed. You can then press Enter to confirm the rename or press Shift Enter to visualize all occurrences that will be renamed. And as we can see, the variable was automatically correctly renamed in all places. Super useful, right? Tip number seven is for commenting out a piece of code. 
you can comment out the whole line by just having a cursor anywhere in the line and pressing the Ctrl K, Ctrl C combination. But you can also do this for specific parts of the line, so only that part gets commented out. And I'm using the Ctrl, Shift and arrow keys to select the whole words instead of selecting character by character. When you want to remove the comment, you can use the Ctrl K, Ctrl U combination. So use the C for commenting and U for uncommenting. Also, I've heard that a lot of people don't know that you can keep holding the Ctrl key while doing this combination. You don't have to release it. So press and hold the Ctrl key and then press the K and C keys one by one while you keep holding the Ctrl key. And that's it. The eighth tip I wish I had known when I started coding is to quickly check what is currently referencing a class, method or public variable. You can do that by selecting, in this case, the method and pressing Shift F12 keys. This will open a window that shows all usages of this method and you can click on them to quickly see where exactly is this method being used. This is super useful to detect how coupled a certain piece of code is by checking which parts of the codebase are referencing it. This ninth tip is more of an aesthetic one, but still definitely useful. You can press the Ctrl K, Ctrl E keys to format the whole class. This will remove unused using statements, fix formatting issues, and correct wrong indentations. I definitely recommend using this combination after completing any code changes before you return to Unity to test them. This final tip is super useful during the refactoring stage when you want to clean up your code a bit. For example, I have this helper class Lightning Branch defined here. It's contextually connected to this class, but it's also used by other classes, so it would be better if it's defined in its own separate file. What we can do is place the mouse over the class name and press the control dot keys and then select move type to lightning branch. This will automatically create a new file with the same name and move the class into it. I actually create new classes like this since they're automatically placed in the correct namespace, have the correct using statements assigned and the file is placed in the correct folder. If you have any other tips that were personally helpful for you, please let us know in the comments down below. And if you want to put all these tips into practice and actually create the scripts that we've used to demonstrate these tips, check out this video. It demonstrates an advanced technique of procedurally creating lightning from code. And that's it. Thank you for your time and good luck with your creations.